So I'm trying to diagnose and solve the problem. It's uh, the parking brake won't engage and it says parking brake service required. When you hook it up to the code reader, that there's an issue with the right rear parking brake motor. Previously, it had had some messages about the VDDM, um, Vehicle Dynamics Domain Master. I took it to Volvo and they investigated it. Um, supposedly got people from Sweden involved and they said, yeah, you gotta replace that VDDM module. Now, I'm not so sure. I'm really hesitant to disturb that, so first I'm gonna go diagnose and see if I can find anything in the rear wheel for loose connections or anything. Honestly, I'm just gonna be uh, poking around and diagnosing for this one. So that can mean that there's just a break somewhere in the circuit because what this is really saying is just that there's the resistance is off the charts. You should read from this that you gotta check your wires and make sure that there's not some um, open in the circuit, like a, a broken wire. And future me here, if you just want to see what was the source of the problem, skip to 824. Otherwise, here comes the electrical diag. It all looks pretty, pretty clean. Um, other people online have had like corrosion and there could still be some of that inside these cord cables. But next I'm just going to um, do a manual uh, test with applying voltage to the parking brake motor to see if it actuates or not. So I'm, I don't know if you can see very well, but I'm lifting up this yellow piece. Pretty common for these European connectors to slide out and then slide off. Ah, okay. Okay, so that's all the way seated. So that was negative on top, positive on bottom to the seating. Now I should be able to reverse it and have it totally release. Of course, this would be much faster if it were 12 volts. All right, so that motor should be totally released now. So, motor works. Um, yeah, I had a feeling it did because it's such a simple mechanism. There's a control unit back here Pretty sure the, these are the wires that go out to the uh, electric brake, electric parking brake. So to confirm those wires are that yellow, orange, green, white, blue, white. Pretty sure those come out the other side here. But if I remember right, there's also another module back, back up in here somewhere, like that blue thing. Yellow, orange, green, white, blue, white, black, white. And I have this diagram here. Granted, it's for the S90. Um, I couldn't find an XC91 anywhere for this year, but it's still the SPA chassis and I'm hoping it's close enough. So this is the right rear brake caliper and I see green, white, yellow, orange. Um, so that's, that's what I would expect out there. Uh, I see over here that it, I'm not an expert on this, but I, high should be positive, low should be negative or ground, and then that combines down to here, which I am not an expert about. But I do see that this goes under the floor of the car. So here it says under body, and then under the floor of the car, and then to the engine bay. And this goes into that, um, VDDM, that's what Volvo said I'd replace, so they still may be right. Um, but let's uh, let's see if we can do some basic voltmeter circuit testing here. So if I follow that wire there down, it, it goes back, back into here and I lose sight of it. So what I wanna ver verify is if it loops back here, and goes all the way up into there. That's that little compartment I was just showing you inside the car. And what do you know, later on when I'm editing, I find a nice diagram that shows how the wire loops around. I, I took the little cover off this so that I could see the wire colors right here. And they are indeed that yellow, orange, green, white. So I am pretty sure this comes up to that top part 
Got my 9 volt battery again. Going with the orange, yellow orange and the green white. I'm going through the back of the connector here. Don't hear anything. Got to reverse the connection. Could it be that simple? Could it just be a broken wire between this connector and the underside of the car? Should be able to jumper this right here. Actually, I can't get an alligator clip in there, but maybe a paper clip will do the job. I got a paper clip. Just get a jumper these two here. See if see if I get any kind of continuity. Pretty simple test. Hmm. Could it really be that simple? I really wonder. Like, could my connector just be bad? And how would I? How could I bypass this? Literally, just had the the dad meme experience where. Ran downstairs and was like, oh, good thing I held on to that old fan cord from when I hung a ceiling fan. So what I did is crimp these ends on. Now I'm just going to wrap it with some electrical tape because they're going to have to go in the plug just like that side by side. Um, and I can't obviously don't want them rubbing against each other. OK, and then what I'm going to do is connect this to the wheel and then swing this around to the back end and jumper that whole harness and see if Like there should be continuity there. Well, that's working now. Just gonna give it a shot. If it works right, use the computer reader. It's kind of did it literally not have the parking brake warning? Without even doing the diag, it started working. I can't believe it. Park brake activated. Check that out. I had to do some surgery here. Basically, I attached a probe to the backside here. Going around, hunting around the wires. If you have a nice sharp tipped lead like this, you can you can poke. I went to the end of the rubber piece thinking it's probably pretty good in between the rubber. And then you just push hard with, and the needle barely penetrates the rubber. And I got a tone there as well. So that told me that there was continuity. Or sorry, that I didn't get a tone there. So that told me I didn't have continuity where it goes up inside the car. I finally got to this part here where I had no continuity and I was peeling off the tape and there was a total break in the wire. There's a little better view of it. So right after that rubber protecting layer. So. Other people online who have had this problem have talked about how it was probably a poor design to not cover the wire all the way back to the body of the car with rubber. Pretty disappointed later to learn that Volvo has released a technical journal on this with a nice diagram of where the brake will probably be. I wish I knew this when I was working. So what I've done is soldered this um, new piece of wire in here. Um, I got some heat shrink around it. Not the prettiest soldering job I know, um, but hopefully it'll hold. Everything's been taped and dressed up. Um, zip ties have been reattached, new ones put on. Uh, not always pretty. I chose to leave a little bit of slack here because that right there where it's taped is the breaking point. And there used to be a attachment right here. And I think it was probably just flexing too much as the car would go over bumps, but also moisture got in there. So of course it got corroded. So hopefully this lasts a little better now. Okay. Everything checks out green. Still working. Cool. 
and now I can engage automatic parking brake. It wasn't letting me do that before. And it looks like I'm allowed to do pilot assist and adaptive cruise control. Those things were disabled as well because whenever something with your braking system is questionable or throwing codes, they'll disable all those functions. I don't know why. Awesome. I'm gonna call this one fixed. What I thought I'd be showing you in this video didn't actually happen, but while I'm in here, I'm gonna do it anyway just for other poor suckers on YouTube who may have to replace this module. I didn't, but you might. So what you do is you gotta pull out these little um, snaps here. They're a pain, but basically you just, I like to dig dig a pick tool under here and lift this part up. They're kind of standard. They're just hard to get out in Audis and Volvos. So I remove those to pull this pin out. There's, there was a couple more I've already pulled out though, if you're wondering why. This comes off to about here. This is where your brake fluid reservoir is right here. And to get this one out, you can't easily get it out without removing your windshield wipers. So I'm not gonna go that far, but I wanted to at least show you, you would, you know, take this, fill the reservoir off, this would come up off of here. So there's little uh, plastic clips that hold that down. You'll break them, no doubt. So maybe order a few before you start. These have caps on them. What's frustrating about removing the windshield wiper blades is you practically need some sort of like wheel puller, like one of these things here. Um, they, the small one should work just fine because there's nowhere to pry on over here. Everything's plastic and you'll break it. And these don't just come off though. You can take the nut out and the wiper still stays down on the sprocket type. Is It's just so hard on this car. You see all the way back in there? That there is the ABS pump. And then you can see behind it, those ABS lines or those brake lines, there's a black electrical box that's mated to it. So you would have to get this plastic piece off here and start taking all that apart. I'll show you what the VDDM module looks like and I'll put the part number up on the video. It says on here, 316-82154. That's the uh, part that Volvo told me I needed to replace. Not a lot of stuff online about it, maybe because it's the newer, um, SPA model. But anyway, I was taking their word because if you look up VDDM, this doesn't come up, even though that's what the scan tool will, will tell you, or that's what it told them. So I don't want to break this seal because I'm hoping to return this one, but I'll do my best to, to show you exactly what it looks like since you can't find pictures online very well either. It says, Brake control module, part number 316-80098. So you can see here, there's the, where the ABS solenoids would go. Right in here would be where the big um, harness that controls all of your car's braking. And that was in the diagram I showed earlier that had um, all the wires coming into the VDDM module. That's, that's this module. So right where that foam protector is, that goes, your, your ABS pump goes right onto there. You have screws that screw into here, and this stays mated to it. Now, when you replace this, of course, you're introducing air into the brake lines. So that's why you have to bleed the brakes on your system. So to actually get the air out of this module, I think you need to um, have a scan tool that can trigger Volvo's ABS bleeding process, which basically makes the ABS pump go. Or you can do it kind of the, e the old fashioned way, which is coming to a bunch of hard stops so the ABS kicks on and then quickly bleeding your, your brakes. That way kind of sucks. So the best way would be if you have a scan tool that can activate the ABS module to push a few bubbles out of the system. I'm not touching any of that today though. I got fortunate that it was just a wiring issue. But if you do need to replace this module, this is what it looks like. The part number I have for 2018, XC90. Um, 
and it goes right right back here, you would have to, like, if I could get this up, I could show you, but it sits right tucked under this metal here. Also, when you buy it, just so you know, it comes with screws, and it looks like some sort of uh, plugs and adapters. If you're diagnosing this kind of message in the future, something about the VDDM, um, if it gives you an error on the ride height sensor or um, the problem I was dealing with, which was the parking brake, I confirmed that disconnecting this does cause those messages. It, it sounds catastrophic and it could just be maybe that you need to spray some contact cleaner in there. Or in my case, it was a, a bad wire, but um, a lot of times the message can make you believe that the whole component or module is bad and in this case it wasn't. So just confirming that this connector here does go to both the ride height sensor on the right rear wheel and the um, electric parking brake. That's what those four wires are. I'll put a link to the PDF for the S90 wiring diagram, which was pretty helpful for me. I'll put that in the video.